Hey CS Dojo, it's YK here. In this video, I'm gonna cover what functions are and how to use them in Python. And using a function, by the end of this video, you'll be able to create a BMI calculator, similar to the one we created in the last video, but you'll be able to use this one repeatedly for many different people and many different variables. I'm also gonna cover what comments are and how to use them. And as usual, I'll put the outline of this course below so you don't have to watch the whole thing. Let me first begin by answering a question though. Kalichi, I think, says, Hello CS Dojo. Although I downloaded Jupyter on my MacBook, I was unable to open your Jupyter Notebook sample files. So if you download a sample file, for example, from csdojo.io slash Python2 for the last video, if you just click the file that you just downloaded, this one on desktop, it actually won't open it. So what you need to do instead is you need to launch Jupyter Notebook in any way you'd like to launch it. I'm gonna use Anaconda Navigator here. And once you launch Jupyter Notebook, within the Jupyter Notebook UI, you need to go to wherever you downloaded the file, for example, desktop, and then click the file that you just downloaded within Jupyter Notebook. And that way you'll be able to open the file and then use it and edit it. And for this video, you can just go to csdojo.io slash python3 to download the sample files. Now with that out of the way, let's dive into our main topic today, which is what are functions? Just like usual, I created a folder called Python Tutorial 3 on desktop and a new notebook file called what are functions. So there are actually a few different ways of looking at functions. A function, one way to look at it is that it's a collection of instructions or it's a collection of code. And notice here that these lines I wrote here, they're not pieces of Python code. They're something called comments. So comments are used to comment on the code that we're going to write below. So you can use it to, for example, explain what variables you're defining and what functions we're going to define and so on. And we can tell that these two lines are comments because each of these two lines begin with the pound sign or the hashtag. So a function can be simply a collection of code. Let's see an example of that. def function one, parentheses, colon, print r, print double quotes r2, and then print this is outside the function. This whole block says def for define. So define the following function and then give it a name, which we can choose and we're gonna call it function one. We can call it any name we want, for example, function one, two, three, or fun, fun, fun. Let's keep it at function one for now. And then parentheses, colon. So a combination of all of these things are important. Def, the function name, parentheses, and colon. Four spaces, print r, and four spaces again, print r two. And these spaces, in front of these two lines are really important, just like with if else statements to show that these two lines are part of this function. If you had, for example, four spaces here and five spaces or three spaces, it just wouldn't work. And as you can see outside of this function, we have a print statement that prints this is outside the function. Let's see what happens once we load or run this cell. As you can see, only this line has been printed. This is outside the function. What happened was this function called function one has been defined as a collection of code, these two lines of code, print r and print r2. And after that's done, this line has been executed. So these two lines of code, print r and print r2, will not be executed, will not be run until we use this function or we call, as we say, this function. To use this function or to call this function, you can just write function one, open parentheses, close parentheses, and that's it. When you run this cell, what's gonna happen is these two lines of code will be executed for the first time. So R and R2 are printed here. And the nice thing about functions is that you can reuse them over and over again. So you can write function one over here again, and actually you can even use it twice in the same cell. And so when you run this cell, function one is executed twice, and these two lines of code are executed twice as well. So let's run the cell and let's see what's gonna be printed. As expected, we see R, R2 twice. 
Okay, in addition to being a collection of instructions or a collection of code, a function can also be a mapping. So let's take a look at an example of that. Def function to parentheses x colon return two times x or two star x. This means define a function called function two, which is going to take the input or an argument and that argument, we're going to call it x and in return to whoever called this function, we're going to return two times x. So we're mapping the input x to the output two times x. Execute this cell and to use this function or to call this function, you can write a equals function two parentheses three. And this says as an argument, use three and call this function function two. And once this expression is evaluated, function two parentheses three will return two times x, in this case, two times three, which is six. And then that number six will be assigned to the variable a. And that number six is called a return value or output. Let's see if this expression works by running the cell and by printing a. And we should see six and we do. Okay, let's try using this function a few more times. If you write b equals function two parentheses four, function two of parentheses four should return eight. So once we print b, we should see eight and we do. And if you write c equals function two of five, and then if you print c, you should see 10. And what if you try to call this function without any arguments? So if you write d equals function two parentheses with nothing inside, let's try running it. It'll actually give us an error saying function two missing one required positional argument, x. So this was an example of a function that maps one argument to a return value. Is it possible to have multiple arguments in a single function? The answer is yes. For that, you can write def function three x comma space y colon, and then let's write return x plus y. This means let's define a function called function three, and then this function is going to take two arguments, x and y, and return x plus y. Let's load this function by running the cell. And let's write e equals function three parentheses one comma space two. So function three one comma space two should be evaluated to one plus two, which is three. So once we print e, we should see three. Okay, so we saw two different ways of using a function so far. The first one was as a set of code or a collection of code. And then the second one was as a mapping. Now it's even possible to combine them both together. Let's see how that works with this function, function four of x colon four spaces as usual, print x, print double quotes still in this function, and then return three times x or three star x. This function basically says, take the argument x and then print x and print this string still in this function and then return three times x to whoever called this function. Let's run this cell and let's try calling this function with f equals function four parentheses four. So what's gonna happen here is when this expression is evaluated, function four, four, we go to this line, so x is printed. So that means four, the number four will be printed. And then this string still in this function will be printed. And three times x, which is 12, will be returned to this expression. So that'll be assigned to f. So once we run this cell, you see that four and still in this function are printed. And once you print f, you should see 12. Okay, let's see another example of a function def define function five parentheses sum underscore argument colon four spaces print sum argument and then print we in double quotes let's run this cell to load the function and of course you can call this function with function five four let's run the cell and then we see that 
for is printed because we have some argument being printed and we, this string is also printed. So one thing to note here is that even though function five is given an argument, we don't have a return value. It's actually technically possible to say f equals function five of four to assign whatever is returned from function five to f, but there isn't much of a point because we don't have any return statement here. Okay, let's now create a BMI calculator here. And let's say we have three people here. We have a hypothetical person named YK here, whose height is two meters and whose weight is 90 kilograms. And here we have YK's sister, whose height is 1.8 meters and whose weight is 70 kilograms. And YK's brother is 2.5 meters in height and 160 kilograms in weight. What if we wanted to calculate the BMI for each person and determine if each person is overweight or not? We can do this by writing a simple function. Let's call this function BMI underscore calculator. And then this function is going to take three arguments, name, height in meters or height underscore M, and then weight in kilograms or weight underscore kg. In this function, write BMI weight underscore kg divided by height underscore M double star sign two. So this says, of course, height in meters squared. And what we could do is we could return BMI here, but let's do something a little bit different here. We're gonna write print double quotes BMI and then print BMI. So this is going to print the BMI of the given person. And then if the BMI is less than 25, this person is not overweight. So we could return not overweight, but to show this person's name, you can just write name plus not overweight. So the assumption here is that name is a string. And when you have two strings, you can concatenate them together with name plus double quotes, not overweight. And then let's write else colon return name plus is overweight. And note here that there are eight spaces here because this else statement is in the function BMI calculator. And then this line is in the else statement within the BMI calculator function. So let's run this cell and then let's write result one equals BMI calculator parentheses name one height underscore M one weight underscore kg one. So this is for the first person. And let's do the same thing for the second person and the third person. Let's run this cell. So here we see the BMI for the three people, 22.5 for the first person, 21.6 for the second person and 25.6 for the third person. And to get the result, we can print result one, result two, and result three. And then we see YK not overweight, YK's sister not overweight, YK's brother is overweight. Actually, we forgot to put is before not. So let's fix that. Go back to the function and then put is here. Run this cell again to update the function and then run this cell below that. And then let's try printing the results again. Okay, it's fixed. So YK is not overweight. YK's sister is not overweight and YK's brother is overweight. Okay, now I have a little task for you. Create a function called, let's say convert, that converts miles into kilometers. So you should be able to call your function just like this with a function called convert, which takes miles as the argument and returns kilometers as a return value. And here you can use this formula, kilometers equals 1.6 times miles. Okay, if you want to get the answer to this question, just go to csdojo.io slash python3 to download the sample file. And you can subscribe to my newsletter by going to csdojo.io slash news to make sure you don't miss my future tutorials. I'm YK from CS Dojo, and I'll see you in the next video.